Joining me now, somebody who has known Mark Zuckerberg for years, one of the savviest observers of big tech, Cara Swisher, host of the Sway podcast Hi. and a contributing opinion writer for the New York Times. Cara, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on your delightful Peacock show. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, here's a quick question for you, opening question for you. Who has more influence mm -hmm. over this election, in your opinion, Rupert Murdoch or Mark Zuckerberg? Mark Zuckerberg. No question, hands down. I mean, Rupert Murdoch is an irritating, uh, toxic uh, waste dump of, 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 of all kinds of media properties, but it has a much smaller reach than Facebook does. And so Facebook really does set the tone for everything and allows people to run rampant, including Fox News on its platform. Yes, good point. Good point. Facebook actually mm -hmm. empowers Fox News even further. I they mean, do. here's what's so amazing. The precursor of Facebook was a website built in Zuckerberg's college dorm room, which he used to score the mm -hmm. looks of women. How do we get to a point today where Facebook now is not just this massive platform, they've even admitted that they helped contribute to genocide in Myanmar. Uh, you have this situation where US senators are accusing them, as they did today, of being the single biggest threat to free speech in America. How do you go from... That to that, I just I sometimes find it hard to well, get my head around that. The, the, the sort of hot or not app that he was doing is different from what Facebook was, but it was that was another thing he made. Um, so they yeah. were separate things. But, you know, it just was a great idea, this idea. And it wasn't a fresh idea. There were all kinds of people doing this. And there were many competing uh, companies at this, MySpace and a bunch of others. So it was an idea that we can all meet online, not unlike America Online a long time ago. And so... Uh, it was it was it was something that he did, and he's an excellent uh, he's excellent at execution. He's excellent at building companies. He hired the right people, and they managed to really figure out a business plan. Unfortunately, the business plan suggests that we need constant uh, use of this product, and people who are enraged are better than than uh, than other people. And so, to push engagement, yeah. he allowed this platform to just thrive without very with very few guardrails, um, and quite a lot of free speech. M too much of it, uh, misinformation and then disinformation, which are two separate things. You know the guy you've interviewed, and we played a clip of you speaking mm -hmm. to him earlier about Holocaust denial. On issues like the fake news stuff and the Russian interference yeah. and Holocaust denial and enraging people on the right, how much of that is he just went along with it, he was ignorant to it? How much of it was he knew but he didn't really care? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, Mark is not a malevolent person by nature. He is not. I mean, it was, you can hear him talking and trying to get to the right answer. I think the issue is that this platform is just too big and without any rules. And he would like it to have it both ways, which is to take this idea of free speech and take it to an extreme that is that doesn't make any sense. There's no... Uh, there's no way that you could have disinformation, misinformation, hate speech all sit together with what most people consider free speech uh, on the same platform without a lot of problems. And in, in that case, and also with, in so many countries and across the world and billions of people. And so one of the things I always think about is Jaron Lanier, who talked about this. He was talking about people getting off of Facebook many years ago and, yes. and, such, and social networks, um, was that this is the biggest experiment in human communications and it's failing badly. Um, especially because there's no guardrails. And so that's what these hearings are supposed to get at. This hearing today was an embarrassment. It was ridiculous, um, you know, uh, dip down the alley of conservatives thinking yes. there's bias, which is just, it's just not true. There's, it's evidence-free. They just say it over and over again and hope that people will believe it, which many people do, but it's disinformation for sure. Yeah. I want to come back to the bias point in a moment. You mentioned, you know, sure. it got too big for him. Do you think the pretty mm -hmm. critical tone taken by senators today from both parties suggests that at some point soon there is going to be an attempt, maybe a bipartisan attempt, to break up Facebook? And would that be a good thing in your view? Well, I think it's part of the bigger uh, issue of all of them. What, 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 are the, what is the power of all these tech companies who have very little regulation uh, surrounding them? And the regulation that exists is actually very good for them. You know, it's very it's very helpful in, uh, it, legislation like Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which grants them broad immunity, which at one point was a good idea. Now it has to be thought about again. It doesn't mean it has to be eliminated, by the way. And President Trump has tried to do that whenever he has a peak with Twitter. He, he issues an executive order that makes no sense. Um, the issue I have with a lot of this is that, you know, like any big industry, whether it's finance or cars or airplanes, they're in need of regulation, right? And, and we have our legislators who are elected officials uh, that are supposed to do that. Um, 
And so what was what's interesting is n there's been no regulation for what is the most important industry right now in the world, the richest people and the, the richest companies, the most valued companies. Yeah. And so I think there is a time to get together in a bipartisan way and talk about things like 230, talk about speech, talk about bigness. And I think it's really all about what Louis Brandeis called the curse of big bigness, which was way back when, when they were passing the Sherman Antitrust Act. And, and before before yeah. that. And so they've done this before. Our country has done this before. And so the issue I have is that we, we aren't looking at it in a substantive, bipartisan and cogent way. We have uh, people like Ted Cruz making things up um, and not it's not helpful to take shots at these companies in ways that are unhelpful and untrue. We have to have a group of people that sits down and, and takes it apart very carefully and thinks about remedies that are very wide ranging, not just breaking up, but regulation such as a private a national privacy bill, fines, yeah. such as what the FDC can levy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Cruz and Trump and others have obviously pushed this kind of myth mm -hmm. that Facebook is biased against conservatives. Even though Facebook mm -hmm. reports on its top 10 performing link posts yes. uh, every day, it puts out the list of them. And those, that yeah. list clearly shows uh, kind of a bias towards conservative media topics and outlets. It certainly does. Um, certainly Margaret does. Sullivan... And Margaret Sullivan wrote in the Washington Post this week that the top performing Facebook posts day after day are dominated by pro-Trump voices or sites like Fox News, Breitbart, Franklin Graham and Ben Shapiro. When Facebook adjusts its practices or tweaks its algorithm, those changes make a huge difference. Often these days, it's left-leaning news sites that take the hit. Uh, Current Zuckerberg True. says he's a liberal. He donates to liberal causes. Again, mm -hmm. does he recognize that his site is promoting conservative misinformation on a daily basis, or is he turning a blind no, eye? No, he's aware of it. He, I, I wouldn't say he's a liberal. Like, n Silicon Valley, it's such a myth that Silicon Valley people are liberal. They're, he they to may be. vote. Um, okay. Uh, all right. They, I call them libertarian light, is what I tend to look at. Like, no harm, yes. no foul for everything. Um, but, you know, and I say light <laughs> because I don't think any of them understand it, really, what real libertarianism is. Um, but, you know, this idea of bias, look at that list. That didn't look like a list of, you know, fair, yeah. you know, fair and balanced by any stretch of the imagination. And it's not a myth. It's a lie. It's an actual lie. And so it, what, what's incredible to me is when these groups try to say they are being uh, censored, I look at lists like this and I see them talking all the time, right? I didn't, you know, I think Alex Jones was on Spotify the other day on Joe Rogan's show. I think that Ted Cruz yammered on on Twitter today. He, they never shut up, really. That's the issue. And I think the issue, um, what was really interesting about a lot of the stuff today is it was essentially people who break rules complaining that they're getting in trouble for breaking rules. Right. Like President Trump has been censored. Yeah. Uh, 60, President Trump has broken rules hundreds of times and they only recently started to to yeah. let him, you know, adhere to the rules. It, it's the strangest thing that you just you want to complain about being able to break the rules that you say are being broken against you. And so if, if you break the rules more, yes, you get dinged more. And, and you know, if you jaywalk yes. all the time, you get tickets. I don't know what to say when they make these specious arguments. And there yeah. are big issues around free speech, which is that one person does control a major platform and he cannot be fired. That is a big issue we all need to talk about yeah. together instead of getting on this like, Agreed. you know, this weird alleyway of, of right and left. It's not that's not what it's about. It's about power. The this week on your podcast, Sway, you spoke mm -hmm. to Hillary Clinton and you asked her mm -hmm. why attacks on Joe Biden and Hunter Biden aren't working for Trump this time around, but they seem to resonate in 2016 when it came to her. Here's what mm -hmm. she said. You know, there were academic studies done afterwards, lots of them, about why people ended up not voting for me. And it was shocking what they believed. I mean, the disinformation was incredibly pervasive. And one uh, very influential piece of totally false news was Pope Francis had endorsed Trump. And where did they get that? They got that delivered in their Facebook feeds. And one was that I was dying. I was constantly dying. And still I'm, not dead. Yeah, I am still so far as I know, walking and talking and breathing. This time round, do you think the Facebooks and Twitters of this world are overcompensating or overcorrecting? Recently, we saw them blocking or slowing down the spread of a dodgy New York Post piece about mm -hmm. Hunter Biden. Do you think that backfired on them? Uh, you know, I think they're trying to figure it out. And what happened is they haven't done it forever. It's sort of like 
uh, feeding your toddler sugar for years and then suddenly withdrawing it. I mean, I don't know what else. I mean, I have kids. I don't know if you have kids, but you have to like, this is, they should have been doing this from the beginning. They should have actually been enforcing their rules and they didn't. And I think so that people at first are shocked that there's rules, uh, which they should be because they'd never been, been subject to them before. And then secondly, they're not very, they, they pretend they're not media companies when in fact they are. And so they make bad calls. They make very bad calls. And so they've trained people to think of them as the public square when in fact they are not the public square. They are not, you know, uh, Ted Cruz, I think today, who was just the worst because he's yeah. much smarter than the rest of them. You know, who, who elected you and who made you boss? I was like, nobody. These are these are you were elected, but they weren't elected. And secondly, who made them boss? They invented it and they made themselves boss of the company. I don't know what these are private companies. They have public shareholders, but they are private companies owned by people and they can do whatever they want. The thing is, they're not very good at it and they have to figure it out on the fly, especially in this highly partisan um, atmosphere. And especially when um especially President Trump is trolling them almost continually, just daring them to do something. And he's been trained to do that. And you know what? Honestly, so, he should do it. That's that's what he should do. I don't even blame him for doing it at this point. So you mentioned the Trump and the trolling. He's, of course, best known for his Twitter account, not for his Facebook yeah, page. Uh, sure. You wrote in the New York Times that Twitter must cleanse itself from the Trump stain. How is that yeah. going to be possible, especially since this is a platform that has refused to ban him outright? You mentioned a moment ago it came very no, late to even correcting him. his tweets on coronavirus. I don't believe they should ban him unless he truly breaks the laws, that, the rules that get people banned, right? Like what happened to Alec Jones and others. Um, I do think there is some news um, value from having him on that platform. I think if he suggests violence or things like that, that was many, that was a couple of years ago when I was saying that. I was saying that, look, he doesn't get to, he gets yeah. to break the, the rules all the time and you should do something about that, which they have done. Twitter doesn't actually take them down, actually, with President Trump. They either put something above a tweet, some, like COVID can be cured by hydroxychloroquine, yeah. something inaccurate and dangerous. They cover it up and say, here's the actual information. Or or they put right below it, this tweet is not true, so such and such. And that, to me, is not, that's not censorship. It's just saying, yeah. hey, really, you shouldn't be injecting yourself with bleach or whatever it is he happens to say that day, you know, and I, that's what they're doing. That's called editorial control over their platform. Facebook actually takes things down, which is interesting. They have a, another rule. So every different site has a different rule of what they're going to do. Reddit has a different one. Um, the only one that doesn't have it is something like Snapchat, which, you know, doesn't have this problem because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't traffic in this kind of um, wide broadcasting of information. Kara Swisher, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time and your insights.